it's Joey with I'm Delete. We're back in the shop with Shane's Lowrider S. We're gonna go through and throw a custom Dynamics lay down all in one license plate mount so we can clean up the back end. We're gonna get rid of that side mount license plate, the bullet blinker. So just follow along and we'll show you how to get into it. You're running the seat bolt, you're going to need a 12.5 16th. Come up under here, unplug the blinker harnesses. You can find these purple, blue, and black. That's going to be the blinkers. So we'll go ahead. And then here we got our uh, license plate. Take a set of flush cuts or dikes and just cut that zip tie off. If you still have it. Now we can kind of back feed all these wires through the fender. You can reach up under, if you, right above the belt on the ramp. Holy Let's take it. the ramp off and do that. Yeah. If you look right here on the left side of the bike, the fender's a little shorter than on the other side. You can get your hand right up under here. And you can back feed these wires. Give you a little control here to pull those through. And now our whole tail light assembly, all the wiring assembly is all free pretty much. So we'll go ahead and loosen up the two bolts that hold the bullet blinkers on and that's gonna pull both these assemblies off and we'll work on getting all the wiring out of it. A half inch ratchet wrench is probably gonna be the best, best way to get in there. If you don't want to have to take the tire all the way out. Now up inside there's like a plastic flap on the that's attached to the fender strap. It's got the rest of the harness for the, the blinkers. Half of them, one was in and one was out. You just have to reach up, kind of pop it out of the out of the Come look up top here. This little, this is actually the, the back side of a little zip tie retainer, so you can just push that in. So we can get a little slack in these wires. Set this up on something. We're gonna steal these wires out of these blinker housings. So these aren't gonna be usable anymore. We're gonna clip them anyways, so that we can hardwire it into the all-in-one. So I'm just gonna clip these as close as I can so we can get the most wire. And I'll still leave a little tail so the blinkers are usable. So we'll probably clip it about here. Leave like two, three inches on these blinkers. And then we'll do the same with the, the tail light. Just like in the soft tail video. Pull all this out of the little retainer right here. Now we'll just cut it here and we'll use that for the uh, running light for the license plate. Now we have half of our wiring for our all-in-one. We'll have to strip all this back. And we'll get the last one out and we'll start wiring up, laying out our location, all of that. You can go ahead and remove that bolt. We're gonna have to replace it with a much shorter bolt now that we don't have the blinker housing there anymore.
What's up? Now we can go through, lay out where we're gonna throw our plate on, drill our holes for our plate and our center hole for the wiring. Start moving forward with all the wiring. Okay, on this all-in-one plate right here, the way these Custom Dynamics backing plates are, it's got a hole drilled to run the housing. If you notice, I'll show you right now, we're gonna pull that all the way through. You feed it in from the backside because Once you set this on top, you've got that notch there for the harness. So now it comes inside of the backing plate, and we'll be able to run this. Through the center hole here, it's quite a bit of wires. They're very small gauge wires. Sure you get them all. So now, so I don't have to fumble with both pieces, I'll bolt these up together. That way this all stays as like a one piece assembly. We'll separate which one's left and right, and we'll separately probably twist and heat shrink them to keep everything nice and clean real quick. So let's get this frame bolted up. Go through and get them all started first so that it doesn't bind. Now we got those all started. We got this as one assembly we can work with. So get these holes drilled out. Get everything laid out, drilled out. We'll run these wires through and then start separating and heat shrinking. Before we get there, we're gonna test all these and figure out what's what, and I'll show you guys an easy way to do that. I have a decent like takeoff battery that's still got life in it. You could use your battery on your bike and pull it out, put it on the table, or if you have some sort of sea do battery or something you can use that's still a 12 volt system. This little sea do battery's got these little inserts which are nice. And what I like to do is I have some jumper wires. It gives me a negative. Make sure you're not on a metal surface because if your gator clips are both sitting on the table you'll be completing the circuit making it hot short. So easiest is to get them all untangled. Get them all straight strands so we can separate everything. Typically black is ground. These didn't seem to come with too many uh, instructions here. So look up ground to black. We'll give our colored ones power and see what lights up. Alright, so that's going to be the ground for the left blinker. And then the purple is going to be our hot for the left blinker. White's going to be our uh, power to the license plate light. Those are both going off the same ground. We have our ground for the right side. That's going to be our the red's probably gonna be our uh, brake light. That's gonna be right side blinker. 
this black and brown it's gonna be right side blinker these are gonna be left side blinker and this is probably going to be the license plate and the run and brake this one will also be the run this will be brake there's the brake that runs off the ground from the right side. And this is where we'll get our running light power. So we'll heat shrink those, and then I'm gonna throw little flags on them so I can remember what's what. I have to go through here. Just give them all. A lot of times I just put it in a drill. Sometimes you can really ruin the wires. That way we can get a nice clean shrink on there without a bunch of loose wires. Well, we don't have to worry about scratching up the fender. The soft tail version, I showed you guys how to lay it out with the ruler. I've done enough of them. On this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Just gonna kinda eyeball and mark it. If you need, you can go back to the soft tail one and look at how I've laid it out with the tape. check it with the tape and just kind of see how close my eyeball was. You can see my center is pretty in line with my seat bolt. This line of the tape is kind of throwing me off. So. Yeah, so my center hole is about pretty much dead nuts on center. and a half from the bottom so everything's square just looks a little off we're gonna go ahead and get those centers punched I'll drill that out and we'll go ahead and mark one in the center probably drill it a little bit bigger than these or, and then uh, run the wires through and mount our mount now we can go through we've twisted everything together with all the corresponding colors we can test all the lights in here so we got our running white light for the plate the red light a brake works, front and rear, you got right blinker, left blinker, the four ways work. So now that we've got them all matched up, everything works, we'll go ahead and get this plate mount mounted on here, route the wires, get everything zipped up, and run it out up under the seat, and just start connecting everything. Alright, so since we got everything all figured out, I went ahead and broke it all apart because now we got to route everything through the fender. 
We've identified what's what and where it needs to go. So we're gonna hold this up here one last time so we never mark the center for the wire. We'll line up on our marks we already made. This style spring punch, I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but this is good for this job because the uh, automatic style puts a lot of flex on the fender. You have to actually lean on it. Just an eyeball center. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little 116 pilot bit. I've already put some tape on here so that we don't bottom out. If you wanna see how we did that, I believe we did it in the uh, the other video on how to do the, the other style license plate now. Just like in the other custom dynamics video, that way we don't spin a chip under the tape and ruin this paint job here. We've got our pilots. Get our plate mounted up there. Before I do that, I'm gonna take a deburring tool and just make sure to get all the burrs on it. And just deburr all these holes, especially that center one. We're gonna be running some wires through there. Since the backside's a little difficult to get to with the chamfer bit, unless you wanna drop the tire, and just take a little sheet of some sandpaper. I got some 80 grit here. one in, throw the gasket on. Usually it'll hang out there for just a second. And you can pop the other two in. Just throw the nuts on the back hand tight for now, just to make sure it doesn't fall off. Go ahead and feed our harness through. Now I'm gonna have to get up underneath and just kind of clean with some Windex. And then I'll, I have some stick-on bases that'll allow me to zip tie the harness all the way up along the bottom side of the fender. So we're gonna do that real quick and run our wires out up under the seat. Give that just a second to evaporate so we're not trying to stick uh, anything to some wet Windex and zip tie bases. You can pick these things up at hardware stores. They have them at Home Depot. This guy's gonna allow you to run a zip tie across so that we'll put this up inside there, upside down. And the harness will basically have like a track of them, probably two or three of them placed through there so we can keep that harness along the top. We'll run it right up out, just like a factory on a on a full fender. When I put these on, I like to press them, and I just keep a hold on there for at least 30 seconds, make sure that glue gets a good bond. I know it's not exact science, I just kind of keep them pretty evenly spaced and not too far apart, because you'll get kind of a weird junction where it 
pulls taut and it's actually not following the fender anymore. this up. You want to keep your first one with just a little slack in it here. Helps if you just kind of twist them together to keep them all clean. Make sure to keep a little slack in it so it doesn't want to break. Okay. Difficult to see in here. Basically, once you've got that loop started, you don't want to pull this tight like that. It's going to be way too tight. So we just want to. I like to pull it in. Just give it a little, a little extra. Now we can zip this down. when cutting zip ties is flush cuts. That way they're flat on the back, unlike dikes, so that way it cuts it flush with the buckle. Not only does it look professional, but if for any reason you gotta get your hand in there later, you're not cutting your arm on a jagged piece of zip tie. So we're gonna continue to just lace these with a little bit of slack in between each junction. super tight to where they're bridging like this, at least enough to lay flat up there. The very back, if you look far enough, you can kind of see it up under here. Just behind this is there's a, a little hole to access right up under the seat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it easy on ourselves. Here. We're gonna twist the end of this harness all together. So it's all one instead of having seven wires all trying to go in different directions. I just thread that through like a needle. And now we've got all our wires here. And we can go back and reconnect them to all the colors that we figured out. And I'll show you how to get those all butt connected. And then we're gonna get all our excess wire cleanly placed up under the seat. Keep it moving. All right, we're gonna bring the bike down on the lift. I'll be able to sit down and go ahead and start matching up wire to wire. 
get everything nice and clean up under the seat. So we have one of these blinkers has a white tag on it. I've just made a mental note for myself that that's my right side. I'll show you the easiest way. If you don't run it, put it on your running hot. Purple's gonna be your blinker. So go ahead and put your test light on there and make sure you're touching ground. So the one with the right white tag for me is gonna be my right side blinker. So we'll just keep that as a mental note. We're gonna ahead and actually cut these down because we don't need all this wire. There's gonna be a whole lot of wire between the two of these stashed under the seat. So we'll go ahead and take some flush cuts. And we're actually gonna snip these probably about six inches long. Probably about the span of my hand for me. And what I'm gonna do here is this sheathing will just slip right off. But we still have our white tag, so I still, that's my right side, I won't forget that. So these are already all stripped. Now what I wanna do with these is so that I don't end up with all three butt connectors being right side by side, we're gonna stagger these all by just slightly longer than one butt connector. So now our three on one harness are all staggered so the three butt connectors won't end up right next to each other. We're gonna do that same thing here. So now since we cut off our stripped ends that we had, personally like to strip these back enough to double them on themselves before I crimp it. Let's see what I mean. Sometimes the sheeting will just stretch on you instead of cutting. Now on our uh, running light for the white on our plate illumination, if you forget which one's ground, this plug is flat all the way down. If you keep it in its straight flat orientation, you can see here is your black. That's your ground, so it's gonna be the outside wire. So here stretch it out and keep it all straight in line into our left left wire so I'll take the ground and bend it back just for that's how I'm gonna keep my own mental note my hot is exposed now that we got everything cut down split we're gonna go ahead and get butt connectors on this half of everything it's always easier to have one half that's your working end. So we'll double these up. Fold them perfectly in half. Now you only need one of these blue running hot wires. One of them you're actually gonna cut back. We can heat shrink it inside. It's not gonna power anything. So 
we can either run it with this one together so that there's no loose wire, which I'll probably do, or sometimes I'll just snip it and heat shrink it and fold it back on itself. These two, since it's gonna be doubled up already, I won't fold it and double on it itself. What I'll do is I'll just twist it. And now it's already doubled in thickness. I'll just snip it down. goes to the plate light and one running hot goes to your oh no yeah I'm right no you don't have to redo anything that was all right I just wanted to make sure before I crimped it cool run through it in my head. So we're gonna snip our white light plate illuminator down. We'll just cut it to the same length as the, our longest wires, which is our purple. We're gonna match that one. Just like with the blinker ones, the sheathing will come off just gently pull. Now it's a little easier to tell which one's your ground because you can see it coming directly out of the left. So we got, again we're gonna stagger them. And by just a little more than a butt connector. butt connector off. We're gonna tie these two grounds into each other. And just cut it right above the crimp so I don't lose a whole bunch of wire. And we'll cut these both flush. Two grounds in together. Our right side hand control ground and our plate elimination.
All right, now we got all our butt connectors on. We're gonna go ahead and slide some heat shrink on here. It's very important to remember to do this step before you start joining these wires or you're not ever gonna get it on. And you start wrapping things with electrical tape. shrink on you can go ahead and start joining these up so we also have one more step here one more that we got to join Our last connector here is gonna be joining this little power converter. This is what allows us to get running and brake out of the tail. Because of the way that these dynas are wired, some of it's on the same circuit, so this separates them so you still get both functions. We're gonna go ahead and clamp this guy on here. First one, I'll be able to show you how we're gonna go ahead and just cover these up. Just for cleanliness, no one wants to get under the seat and see the sea of butt connectors under here. Keep the water out of them. I like to use the three to one heat shrink so it'll shrink down three times its size. Now we'll make sure we keep water and everything out of that connector. This red is going to be your brake. Actually, forgot one step. On your left side uh, blinker harness, the one that does not have the white tape, see? There is. This is my indicator for my right side. So that's, that's our right. So on the left, you have this blue wire with the red stripe. That's going to be your brake light. So you actually have to depin that out of this connector where it goes from four to three. That's where they join circuits. You're going to separate this wire. We're actually going to have to unwrap some of this factory electrical tape here. I'll probably just run a seam ripper right through it. Flush cuts come in handy again. solder but because of the very fine gauge of this wire the solder joints become brittle so if you get in here and you start fiddling with wires or even just moving them out of your way solder joints tend to break so as kind of almost unprofessional as butt connectors are that's the way to go on something like this so we're gonna go ahead and get one more and we'll join these and then we'll start connecting everything all right so now we got a little converter box here on the red side side with two wires and take this red side.
we've got our first permanent connection here. And now we've got our brake. And once we connect our orange wire here, we're gonna have the running that's gonna come off the blue. Since these wires, some of them are finer than others, so this one won't even fit in the tool. So we're gonna take a little extra off. We'll probably fold this one three times. Okay. Make sure when you're hooking these up, none of these are routed through each other, just so it's nice and clean. just so I don't have a million of these to do later. Keep shrinking them as I go, but if you're gonna do this, make sure that none of your other heat shrinks are directly behind you, behind your flame, so you don't shrink two of them at the same time. So now we've got our brake and our running. Next we're gonna take, let's do left blinker. So we got our left side, the purple on, on this harness from the Custom Dynamics harness. It's gonna be our left side blinker. Then we got our left side, because we, again, our white paper here. So I'm gonna hook that guy up. And we're just gonna continue the same way we've done all the others so far. And I'll keep helping you match them along the way. behind all these so we don't lace them through each other. We're gonna take one of our grounds from our plate harness into one of our existing grounds here. ground from the plate harness. Just strip this one back a little bit. I'm gonna put that to our doubled up ground. Get those two grounds heat shrunk. Now we've got our power for our plate illumination. It's going to be the white wire.
Last one's gonna be our right blinker. This is gonna be this brown guy right here. Go ahead and test it one more time that we got everything permanent. Before we button it all down, we still gotta to torque down the plate. Uh, we're going to zip tie this harness all clean, get it routed clean up under the seat so that it's not a bird nest. Let's check these out. We've got our white light for the plate illuminator, our running, brake, brake, right plate. Left blinker and the four ways. Last one, slip behind this little plate here. You can get it right as it comes out of the fender. I'm not trying to flare out.
right, guys, we got Shano's Dyna looking pimp as fuck with that lay down plate mount. So get yours on the web store. Fucking comment, like, subscribe. We gotta go get ready for Born Free. I got wrenching to do. I'll probably be wrenching into the wee hours of the night. So fucking get out there. I'll see you in the show.